guys, so we're back and we're going to be talking today about the different routes that you can be taking to go up Kilimanjaro. So this is great for anyone who has not chosen their route yet and is thinking about booking a trip to do this trek. And it can also be useful for, for someone who's already booked their, their route and they want to find out a little bit more information about it. So let's take a look at our map now. Starting from the southwest of the mountain, the routes are as follows. The Shira route, the Lamosha route, the Makami route, the Umbwe route, the Marangu route, and the Rongai route. The routes then circle the Kibo Cone using either the Northern Circuit or the Southern Circuit, and they blend into one of three trails that lead to Kibo Summit and Uhuru Peak, which is our destination. The three options to get to the top are the Western Breach Route, the Barranco Trail, and the Kibo Huts Route. The first of the three is the most difficult, the Western Breach option. I probably wouldn't go for this route unless I had some experience with mountain climbing. Also, the camp on this route, the Aero Glacier Camp, has a high elevation, nearly 5,000 meters, which is a no-no for safe acclimatization. It's fairly high for sleeping purposes, and therefore we have a higher risk of severe altitude sickness, which we really don't want to be dealing with. The Shira, Lamosho, Makame, and Umbwe routes can choose the difficult Western Breach option, which is shorter, or add a few more days and take the Barranco Trail. The Marangu and Rongai routes use the Kibo Huts route to get to the top. The Maweka Trail is a descending route for Shira, Lamosho, Makami, and Umbwe routes. And Marangu route is both ascending and descending, and it's joined by the Rongai route on the way down. So there you have it. Those are our routes on a map. Let's go through each of these in a little bit more detail. So I recently purchased a book. It's written by Harry Sedman. It's right here. Um, it's called Kilimanjaro, The Trekking Guide to Africa's Highest Mountain. So I did use this for a portion of this video just to get some information about the different routes. Um, but I did use some other sources as well, so I'll be listing those at the end of the video. And what I have done is I have compiled a complete guide to selecting your route in a PDF format. So it's going to be telling you the route winners for the most scenic route, the most physically difficult route, the most highly trafficked route, and uh, the best chances of getting to the summit route. And also my personal route of choice. So you can get that by clicking on the right hand corner of your screen right now. So let's start talking about the different routes themselves. So the first one we're going to be talking about is the Marangu route. So yay, this is our route, the one that we picked. It's also known as the tourist route or the Coca-Cola route. And the main reason that we picked this route is because my husband doesn't really ca like camping in tents. So this is the only route that you can take where there is hut accommodation. But don't get too excited. It is basically a mattress and a pillow. And the good thing is, is obviously it is covered. So if it does rain, then that's pretty good potential for you to stay pretty dry. So a lot of people think this route is pretty easy. And for the most part, it is a steady, gradual climb until about the last camp. But for this reason, there is a lot of in inexperienced tourists trying this one out. And because there is a shorter option available, this one has one of the lowest rates of actually getting to the summit itself. So there is the five day option, but we chose the six day op option where you can add an extra day to acclimatize. So we're hoping that should sort us out pretty well. The other important thing with this route to note is that over the last two days before trying to get to the summit, you go up about 2,000 meters in altitude, which is fairly high, some say, in terms of allowing you to acclimatize properly. So if you compare it to a route like Rongai, they do only about 300 meters on the day before attempting summit, whereas for us, we're doing close to 1,000 meters on the day before summit. So that can be a little bit of downside, especially if you really want to get to that summit. So the cool thing about this route is that it can be slightly less expensive than some of the other routes because you're staying in huts. Obviously, the porters don't have to carry the camping equipment up. But for this reason, there are a lot of budget operators going up this trek. So really 
consider the tour company before you book it because there's a lot of them that they don't really care about you getting to the summit. So we made sure that we booked a good one for our Morangu route. So the next route we're going to be talking about is the Makame route. So the Makame route is also known as the whiskey route. So basically making the Coca-Cola or Morangu route sound like a baby because it is more physically difficult. Especially sections like the Barranco Wall or just before the Shira Ridge where it would be good if you had some experience with uh, hiking or trekking. However, because of it, the slow acclimatization, it's a fairly popular route and it actually has really good chance of getting to the summit. So for this reason and the fact that it's beautiful and has a bunch of variety, it's right now the most popular route to go up Kilimanjaro. It has surpassed Barangu, which was originally the most popular route to go up. One downside to this route though, and it can't be avoided, is that unfortunately, it does join with a bunch of the other routes as you go up a little bit closer to the top. So it gets joined by the Lamosho, the Shira, and the Umbwe routes as you get closer up there. And that reason causes a lot of traffic. So expect a lot of bumper to bumper traffic when going up the Makame route. But overall, the Makame route is a great route to choose. I would say that this is, there's a reason why it's the most popular and uh, it would be a great route to pick. All right, so the next route we're going to be talking about is the Rongai route. So the Rongai route is unique because it approaches Kilimanjaro going up the northern aspect of it. So this is actually the only route that does this. And for this reason, it's really quiet and fairly serene. So if you want something like that, that's a good route to choose. The other thing about the Rongai route is that because it's so quiet, there is greater chances of seeing wildlife. It does also acclimatize fairly slowly. It is one of the longer routes on there, and for that reason, and for the added transport reason, it is an expensive route to choose. So the northern part of Mount Kilimanjaro, where Rongai is coming up from, is a little bit drier than the southern part, which is, c contains all the other routes. So because of this reason, it doesn't see a lot of rain, which might be good if you really don't want that to hinder your climb up Mount Kilimanjaro. We're actually going in the rainy season. Uh, November is a month where it's a little bit rainier. So as long as there's no torrential downpour, I'm okay. The other thing about Rongai though is that because it is a little bit of a longer climb, it does acclimatize you very nicely. As I mentioned before, the day before the summit attempt, you're only going about 300 meters, which is amazing because you have that day as more of a rest day and attacking the summit the next day won't be as bad. All in all, the Rongai route is not a bad one to choose when going up Kilimanjaro. So the Shira route is unique because it actually starts at about 3,500 meters, which is a significant altitude. So most people choose to go up via a car to this level because there are tracks paved, which is kind of cool. But the fact is that you are being catapulted to a significant altitude. So what they recommend is that either A, be used to altitude or be living at high altitude or climb another mountain beforehand, which is definitely not what I'll be doing. But you can climb Mount Miru or Mount Kenya, which is uh, they're fairly close by. If you're used to the altitude levels at Mount Miru or Mount Kenya, which is about 4,000 meters or so, you should be fine if you take the Shira route. The Shira route is also quite a beautiful one. It is quiet and for that reason, um, the operators on this route are a lot better. There's not a lot of budget operators going on this one, so that can be a good reason to pick it. It also has good chances of getting to the summit. So especially if there is a day taken in Karanga Valley, that camp, it makes the day of summit attempt a lot easier. So the Shira route is great for that reason. The other thing about Shira route, like the Makame route, it would be really good to have experience with difficult terrain and also with long periods of extended camping. So if you have that, then this route should be a good one for you. So the Lamosho route is Stedman's route of choice, and for good reason. The first two days, you're going through remote rainforest where there is high potential for seeing wildlife. 
The Lamosha root is very similar to the Shear root in the other aspects of it. It's a little bit longer, so good acclimatization potential and therefore good chances of reaching the summit. And for this reason, and due to the quietness and the beauty of this root, it's becoming slowly more and more popular. But of course, it's going to be a little bit more expensive because each day that you're adding on the mountain is going to increase the price quite a bit. So keep that in mind when you're choosing the Lamosha route. So as with the Mikami and the Shira routes, on the Lamosha route, you should be used to periods of difficult trekking and long periods of camping out. So the last but not least route is called the Ambwe route. So the Ambwe route is probably the most difficult route to choose when going up Kilimanjaro and definitely not one to choose if you don't have any climbing experience. There are portions of this route where you're actually using the tree roots as steps and ways to kind of pull yourself up, which is not going to be easy for you if you've never had experience with anything like this. For this reason, the Ambwe route is quiet, which is nice and quite serene and beautiful at the same time. So can be good if you are someone with experience and want to challenge yourself. Again, the Ambwe route is going to be joining up with the busier routes going up to the top. But overall, this is considered the statistically least popular route to choose to go up Kilimanjaro. So there you have it guys, there are your six routes up Kilimanjaro in a little bit more detail. Don't forget to get my comprehensive guide for selecting your route. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, you do not want to miss what we have coming up next.